Angie Bauman, and I am passionate about Bible study. Friend, my journey has not been an easy one. I am a trauma and abuse survivor, and I still walk with a limp. But I also walk in freedom, because as I've studied God's Word, He has released me from layers of shame and invited me into a life filled with an abundance of His peace, joy, rest, and hope. I'm transformed because I study the Bible, and my heart's desire is to create offerings that help you get and stay in your Bible so you experience that transformation too. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Maybe it's as you enjoy your coffee or with pen and notebook ready, or you're driving to work or walking the dog from wherever you are in your day. Let's dive deep into a verse of scripture together. So we walk steady on. Let's get started. Welcome, friend. Today, we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit is a helper, and we're going to do that by unpacking John 15, 26, using my step-by-step method. Step-by-step is an inductive Bible study tool that focuses on one word in one verse of scripture to find life application and If you would like to study along with us today, you will find links to a study sheet and the step-by-step masterclass in today's show notes. And my dear friend, Susie Crosby is back with us today. And I always look forward to studying with you, Susie. Thank you for being here once again. Thank you for having me, Angie. Love it. Love it. Love it. So John 15, 26 in the easy English Bible. This is the first time I've ever used this translation for something, but I loved it for what we're doing today. John 15, 26 says this, when I return to my father, I will send the helper to you. So before we dive in just a little bit about Pentecost Sunday, because we're celebrating Pentecost Sunday this week on the Christian calendar, it falls on May 19. Pentecost was an annual harvest festival that occurred 50 days after Passover. The Greek word Pentecosto is, uh, means 50. It became an important Christian holiday after God poured out the Holy Spirit upon the Jerusalem church on the first Pentecost after Christ's resurrection. And we find that in Acts chapter 2. It's actually a day in the church that is as significant for Christians as Christmas and Easter. And I've always said that if our culture designed a money-making gift, giving something around it, we would talk about it more, (laughs) the holiday of (laughs) Pentecost. We'd give Pentecost gifts and sing songs about Pentecost season. Um, But I kind of, I kind of hate it that it's not that known, but I also am glad that it's not that materialized, you know, like Christmas and Easter are. The only negative to that really that I see is that fewer Christians understand really and celebrate its significance. But in short, Christmas celebrates the birth of Christ. Easter celebrates the resurrection of Christ. Pentecost celebrates the indwelling of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit in believers. So we are going to talk about that Holy Spirit indwelling as we study this week and talk again about the helper. Our verse is John 15, 26 from the Easy English Bible. It says, when I return to my father, I will send the helper to you. Are you in a church that makes any kind of big deal about Pentecost, Susie? Yes, but um, I still admit I have a lot to learn mm. about. Oh, yeah. I feel well, like that's sort of been... Uh, my story. I really a lot of the churches I've been in have said, "Oh, it's Pentecost Sunday" as a kind of a casual mention, but mm-hmm. don't really um, feel like I've learned a ton. Yeah, about. yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that. Actually, I think a lot of churches have really gotten away from uh, emphasizing the Christian calendar. That's one of the reasons that I kind of like to do this. What I call light education on the Christian calendar because it's so for me, it's so important. It matches or models itself after the feasts and festivals that are in the Old Testament. And it's just this rhythm, this ritual that continually calls us back into connection with him. And it's for us, not him, right? And so I just think as we recognize and move through the Christian calendar and the Christian holidays, we we not only hit the high points, but then we also just are in this, this rhythm of, yeah, connection. I don't know a better way to say that, a rhythm of connection with the Lord. I like that. Yeah. So the book that we're in is the Gospel of John. The author is the Apostle John. He was one of the sons of a fisherman named Zebedee, a man who was a passionate follower of Jesus Christ. He had seen the miracles of Jesus firsthand and heard the anointed words that he taught. He walked with Jesus and followed him wholeheartedly. 
and he describes himself as the one whom Jesus loved. The audience is the scattered Jews and believers, and the date of the writing is somewhere probably around AD 80 to 85. Chapter 15, where we are hanging out, is about the departing Jesus teaching his disciples about life in him. And our verse is 26, which corresponds to how the world may reject disciples. No, the 26 is the witness of the Holy Spirit and the disciples. Sorry, <laughs> wrong line. The witness of the Holy Spirit and the disciples. That's where we're focused on today. So step one is choose our word. And Susie will get us started with that. Okay. The word for today is helper. And a helper is defined as one who helps, but um, a little bit deeper than that, a helper gives assistance, support, or provides something that is useful or necessary. Um, a helper also improves, relieves, rescues, saves, and benefits hmm. the recipient of the help. Uh, the opposite of a helper is a hinderer. And a hinderer creates difficulty, one who impedes, impairs, or blocks. Rescues. That's the word that I'm like, uh -huh. that, that just like landed with me as you were saying that, as you were going through all those words that rescues, but you want, but the opposite is a hinderer. Is that the word that you used? Yeah. Hinderer mm. or someone who blocks. blocks. Or yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because right away I'm thinking when when someone or something is making something more difficult, th then I think we have to, we have to lift that up and say, is that really God? God's a helper. So that doesn't mean we don't do anything difficult. That doesn't mean he doesn't call us to anything difficult. That's not at all what I'm saying, but God is a God of order, not chaos. Right. And so as we're experiencing blocks and obstacles, if they are of God, they are still for our benefit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause he's a helper. So good, good, mm -hmm. good. Step two, investigate. Part one is to compare our word in other Bible translations. I found a few, I found comforter, counselor, mm -hmm. spirit, um, paraclete. Is that the right word? Do you know that word? P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. -E. It means an advocate or a helper, but I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Paraclete. Um, an advocate or a friend, the message said friend. And I liked that one a lot too. Yeah. yeah. Did you find anything else? I did. I had in the um, passion translation, I think it is the yes. two people, uh, the divine encourager, Ooh. which I really love divine encourager. Don't we just need that? Yes. So much. <laughs> you know what? That makes me think of how we can be that for each other too. Like, because the Holy Spirit is in us, oh, this makes, I can feel the tears behind my eyes because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit can stir us to speak words of truth and encouragement and div yeah, divinely. Right. And we can be, that's how we are his representation, right? His representative. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me sit up and take notice for sure. So, okay, part two of the investigate step is to research the original word. What did you find there, my friend? The word helper comes from the Greek in Strong's number 3875, and it means comforter, advocate, consoler, and intercessor. Mm -hmm. Literally, it means called to one's side. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Called yes. to one's side. And the pronunciation, uh, you said paraclete. I think that's right because the uh, the root word is paraclete, paracletos. Mm, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So, so yeah, meaning advocate. And um, in the Bible dictionary that I looked up, it says, in the Vines Bible dictionary, it says that like Jesus was a comforter bringing relief to his disciples, the Holy Spirit would be another one. So that comforting was going to continue even though his presence wouldn't be there the they he wanted them to know that that comforting comforter was going to still be there yeah and i and i'm paraphrasing all this but there, there's this point right that jesus is like it's good that i'm going away right it's good that i'm going away because while i'm here you think you need this body 
to comfort you, right? But I'm sending the one that's going to be with you always. And I I love what you just said about called to one side. It makes me feel like when I need help, when I need rescuing, I can reach out and pull it into me, right? Because it's, but I can always do that. You know, my husband doesn't have to be available. My friend doesn't have to answer my text right back or something like that. Like, because people are people and they have different things going on. And so if I'm looking for someone to be that, then I'm setting myself up for disappointment sometimes, even though people want to help us. It's not like they're being mean or something, but this help, because he has sent it after he's gone away, is something that I can reach out for and pull to my side anytime, day or night, whatever I'm facing. He's not ever tired of me. Is that good? that I need help again, right? It's such a beautiful thing. Well, I know um, we've had, we have different opinions sometimes about the the chosen mini series, but there's a lot of scenes where people are trying to be really close to him. Mm. And there's so many people. And that really stresses me out because I, it's like when there's a famous person and everybody wants to touch or be close to or talk to that person, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. And it, and he was human. When he was human, it was impossible for everyone to get as close to him as they wanted to be. And I, sometimes I feel like it's almost that competitive, you know, like we're going to get to heaven. Are we all going to be just clamoring to like, can I be, but we don't have to because he gave us each that he's giving us each that little part of himself to always be with us. I love and so that. that's what's happening here. Yeah. And we don't, it's, and it is good for us that he's not here because we wouldn't, I, I think I'm interested what you think about this. We wouldn't lean on something invisible if we had the opportunity to cling to something tangible, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's for us that he's gone away, which is, I think what he's trying to tell his disciples. It's for you that I'm going away because you need this with you always. And this is actually going to be better for you. Yeah. He's helping us have a helper. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, part three in the investigate step is to read some commentary. And I have a couple of notes here from the enduring word. It says, Jesus previously spoke of sending uh, of the sending of the helper. The departing Jesus knew the disciples would need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to face the opposition the world would bring. He knows we need rescuing, right? He knows he, he knows we need help. He knows it's tough here. He knows it is. I, I believe that that's one of the reasons that don't be afraid is in the Bible as many times it is because he knows it's scary. <laughs> he knows we're going to be afraid, right? So he's just like, let me remind you, uh, the uh, the Faith Life Study Bible said the spirit as God's means of communication on earth instructs believers and leads them to follow God's will. The spirit gives them access to God, his plans and his wisdom. He can do so because of Jesus's sacrifice for sins. It's crazy to think that when we like open our hands to God's leading. Complicated things become uncomplicated and his plans do become clear. Like he will, he wants to give us what he has for us. Like he doesn't want us to wander around in the dark. And that doesn't mean we understand the whole thing, dang it. Like sometimes he doesn't give us very many steps at a time. I know that's frustrating for him, but but it really, he will show us the next step to take. Um, He will give us his wisdom and we'll know what to do. J. Martin C. Scott says, the purpose of the Spirit's coming is not merely to remind the disciples, but to give evidence concerning Jesus. The language is juridical. Juridical? Is that the right way to say this? And this becomes clearer with the call for the disciples too, to stand as witnesses. They will be able to do so through the presence of the Spirit but also because they've accompanied Jesus throughout the ministry. At this point, it is especially important to remember that the whole purpose of witness is to bring others to an encounter with Jesus and so to faith. When this takes place, the reader as believer is drawn into the circle of those who have been with Jesus from the beginning. That's so interesting because the Holy Spirit, as he is with us always, he helps us know how to represent him as we were just talking about, like the divine encourager, right? Like we can be the divine encourager because we've walked with Jesus, like not as the apostles who walked with him, human, but because Jesus is in us and the helper is with us, if we've taken time to get to know that helper, then we can respond to whatever is in front of us in a way that indicates we know him, right? Mm. Oh, Yeah, and when, when Jesus prayed, a couple chapters later, when he prays for the disciples before he's leaving, 
he says, I'm not praying just for these, but for those who will yes. come to me because of them. And so we're already included in this Yes, whole plan. He's already got us in mind to be recipients of this. And it's perpetual, right? Like I'm not just praying for them, but the ones who will come to me because of them again, I'm, and, but then, but then the one, but if we're the ones that came because of them, then there are people that are still coming because of them because we're helping people come, you know, like it's this, this ongoing perpetual thing that the helper helps people come to him. And he, for whatever reason that I will not understand, allows us to partner with him in doing so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One more commentary note that just kind of sums it all up. This is Andreas Kotzenberger, I believe that's how you say this name. The spirit replaces Jesus's physical presence by permanently indwelling his followers. Mm. Yeah. It's just, it's what we have always. And you can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> you can no. ignore it. You can silence it. You can try all kinds of things to make it be quiet or go away. But you, once it's in, you can't get it out. That is a good point. I like, <laughs> like knowing that. <laughs> So part four in the investigate step is to try to rewrite the verse. I'm going to read it again in the original. This is from the easy English Bible. When I return to my father, I will send the helper to you. Susie, what'd you do with that? I wrote, I'm returning to my father, but this is not the end of our relationship. We will send you our comforting spirit of truth to help you with everything and anything you need. Anything and everything, right? Yeah. So good. So good. All right. Step three is find the characteristics of God. And I put power that Christ's power lives in me. That's an important one for me. That's a verse that I return to a lot in Romans. I can never remember exactly where it is, where it talks about the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. And that's important to me. I think now I'm pausing. Is that Rome? I think it's Romans. Uh, that's important to me. I think because there were times in my life that I have felt and still do feel powerless when I'm depending on myself or when I'm allowing the world to tell me who I am or I'm finding my identity in something in the world. I feel very small and powerless. But when I remember that because he is in me and I am in him and all that he promises, then I am not powerful as a human. And yet I, you know, I have the faith that can move mountains. It says so in scripture, right? And so that's just one of the things that knowing that helper is with me constantly. I'm like, you don't have to know how to be powerful. He is powerful and he is in you. So therefore his power is in you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also put no favoritism because the Holy Spirit is offered to all who believe. That's good. I think that's good too. It's so important to remember. I love how we come up with different. Such I do different too. What did you find? I'm always like, oh Yeah. When you come up with yours, I wrote uh, faithful, sure, attentive, oh. and omnipresent. Yeah, he's everywhere, all the time. You know, yeah, which is so hard to understand, but so amazing. Yeah, yeah, so good. Well, move us into step four, which is identify the lie. And we do this, if you happen to be new to step-by-step, step, uh, we do this part, step four, identify the lie, because it helps us understand what we might be tempted to believe. That's this half-truth that the enemy uses to move us away from aligning our hearts with the promises of God. And so if we can find it and call it out, like what makes this difficult to believe or difficult to live out? If we can call it out, then we can replace it with the truth. So for you, Susie, what's something to be aware of? This has been a real, this is a tough exercise for me always because, um, it brings up a lot of emotion. And for me, being abandoned is probably my biggest fear and my worst mm -hmm. trauma. And uh, this lie that I believe when I think about this is I'm on my own and Jesus leaves me too. Jesus leaves me too. There he goes. And uh, yeah. I've, thank you for being brave and saying that out loud. I think we can all relate to that because when our heart is broken, whatever that looks like in our life, if you loved me, you wouldn't have let this happen. I think it's such a, I think that is an essential faith question to wrestle with. Mm -hmm. I think all of us at some point have to wrestle with this feeling of, 
I feel like you let me down and I, I, this is hard for me to understand. And, and I think we all have felt abandoned by God at some point in our relationship with him. And in those moments of feeling abandoned by God, we have this important, hugely important decision to make. Will we ask the questions and let him minister to us, let him help us through our pain, whatever that is, or will we walk away and hold up our hand and say, I'm not gonna love you anymore. And yeah. And, and how do we respond to that? So yeah, thanks for calling that out. The enemy wants us to believe that he has or will abandon us. Right. Because ultimately the enemy's lie is be afraid. It takes all kinds of different forms based on personality experience, but be afraid, be Mm -hmm. afraid. Again, I mean, that's part of the reason why it says in the Bible so many times not to be afraid, I think, because if we can ask ourselves, what are we afraid of? Then we can remember that God is, is faithful, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So step five, as we're wrapping up, is called So What, where we just talk about a key takeaway. And I'm very curious of maybe would you share what your uh, what your takeaway is for this study? Well, I have a visual. Love it. For you, for our listeners. Um, and it goes back to Genesis. This actually, I'm kind of taking this from a Bible study that we're working on at church, which has a lot to do about how Jesus prayed for the disciples in these very chapters right here in John. So this is by Christy McClellan. And she talks about um, Jesus wanting his disciples to know that uh, he was not leaving them as orphans, that he was sending the spirit. And that um, in the beginning, very first verse of the Bible, it says, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And she says that the word spirit in Hebrew is ruash, meaning breath, wind, and spirit. And that at the beginning of that story, the spirit was not only present, but it was actively doing something. It was hovering. Mm. So even though we're mostly talking right now about the indwelling of the spirit, there's also this really cool image of this spirit hovering over us. Like a, it's also compared to like a bird a mother bird hovering over its young. So I kind of picture this hovering happening, the spirit just hovering over me, wherever I go, whatever's going on, there's this active, powerful, like you said, powerful, just um, spirit of the living God. And it's, he's doing something. Yeah, He's doing something as he attends to me. And so just, that's just part of what she talks about in that, in the Bible study, it's called when, when you pray, Mm. if you ever, if you wanted to reference that. Yeah. I will link it in the show notes. It's Christy McClellan. Mm -hmm. Well, she does. She's part of it. It's a, there's six authors. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Studying studying prayers. So anyway, Mm -hmm. I love that. Really? uh, Yeah. Just a really neat image of the spirit hovering over the waters at the beginning of time. And then that same spirit hovering over us Mm -hmm. as his own. I am a boy mom, as are you. And this makes me think of a a mother that hovers, right? And how that can be a negative. But I read an article years ago, and I don't remember if it was talking specifically about boys, but I think that it was because it was talking about like the relationship between a mom and her sons. And I've watched for this in my kids because she was talking about like when your child either does something embarrassing or does something well, but especially when your child does something embarrassing and they know you're around watch because so often they look immediately to your face. They look to your face for, uh, encouragement or affirmation. Are you nervous? Did that upset you? Like, you know what they're, they're reading your emotions and will decide how to respond to whatever happened to them based on your emotions. I'm thinking, you know, because my kids play sports and stuff. So when they strike out, they're looking for your face, you know, or something like that. And I have watched that in my children and I've noticed how often it's true where they're, they're like scanning for that, like sort of familiar face to say, help me, help me decide how to move forward based on what just happened to me. And it, as you were talking about hovering and I was thinking about mothering, I'm getting to a point, I promise. But, but I was thinking, what if the Holy Spirit was the thing we looked to first, whenever oh. something happened to us to know how to respond to it? right? Like, how should I feel about myself based on what this conversation, how should I react to this person? How should I handle this feeling of rejection? How should I handle this offense? How should I handle this mistake that I made? You know, and if we just immediately, our eyes, spiritual eyes, were looking for that hovering presence, 
that was always there for reassurance and guidance. And I think that's, I love that. Thank you for you. Thank you for connecting it to the boy mom and sports thing. Cause that's right there. That's me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. How quickly they look for our reassurance yeah. and, and even more so can the Holy spirit, the advocate, the helper that is in us, we can look to that for reassurance, not just to say you're, you know, everything we always do is okay. It's, it's not going to placate us. Is that the right word? But it's going to guide us and serve us and help us and assist us. So I love that picture. I think that's great. It called to, and that same spirit, uh, was we, as we look for it hovering, it's, we're calling it to our side, right? Yes. Yes. To go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, yeah. 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 And we don't have to even yell loud because it like, nope. it's, our, it's, oh, as soon as we look up, it's coming to us because it's already, it's already near us. Like it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to run, you know, or anything. It's just already right there. So, oh, so good. All right, friend. Well, we would love to hear your takeaway. If you have one, you can email me anytime at steadyonpodcast at gmail.com. If you have not yet, I would be so grateful if you would subscribe to the podcast on whatever directory you use to listen. It only takes a second. And it guarantees you will receive every episode. If someone happened to come to mind today as you were listening, we would love it if you would share the episode out with them. Inviting them into what we're doing is another great way to support the show. And one more time, Susie, just thank you again for doing these with me. I always learn so much. I needed this today, Angie. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Agreed. I always feel so refreshed and just encouraged. And I feel lighter after we spend time like this in the word. And so friend, we hope that you feel the same way after listening. We hope that it's just been a blessing, something that really has been a divine encouragement, we hope for your heart, right? And so, yeah, so thank you once again for listening. I pray wherever your day takes you, you you're walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.